the big attack starts now, and it's done with a blitz. Now, I had to actually look up the exact terminology for a blitz so that I made sure not to make too much of a fool of myself. All I remember is, as a kid, it's what we yelled when we tried to sack the quarterback. Welcome to the heart of the stories we tell. My name is Rob, and tonight I will be reviewing... Just like every other season, this one ended with a bang and a pretty big reveal, and everything going on was pretty awesome. I will say that from the beginning I said Voltron can't fight a war, and they proved it tonight. So, for those of you that don't know, I'm trying to build a community to discuss hows and whys of stories. What I do is I review stories as they come up, movies, TV shows, Netflix, books, and then... Every week I do a Sunday Theory video, and every Thursday I do a Flashback Thursday. If you're interested in diving into the heart of the stories we tell, hit that subscribe button now and enable alerts. Right now, though, we're talking about Voltron, and Season 4 was pretty badass. I just got finished with it, and more and more I get amazed at how much they fit into this kid's cartoon. But before we go into specifics, I need to throw up my warning. So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. Bon dun 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 Okay, so we're going to start with episode 5, and like I said, begin the Blitz. It basically is the heroes really starting to come into their own. I was surprised we haven't seen Galaxy Garrison yet, and I have to say, the amount that the heroes really do have to split up and do their own thing amazes me in this show. They're working hard to keep the Voltron Force unified, but like I said many times, Voltron's a symbol, Voltron's a tank, but at the end of the day, tanks don't win wars. Tanks working with special forces, working with air support, working with... Well, I guess Voltron's also air support. But any way you look at it, they really showcase how much they need to build an alliance here. And they did. The new alliance is pretty badass, too. And as we come to the end of this, we see what I think is a pretty dramatically awesome tactic. We already have, just by chance, a line in the sand. We cut off the Empire... And then, we go in for the kill. We need the Blade of Mamora to do some strikes. We need the fleet of ships to come in and do some strikes. We have a galaxy-ending super weapon that can fire faster than light photons out across the galaxy as cover. But at the end of the day, it's really a realistic military tactic. Those super cannons are just high ground art artillery. And in a realistic world, they would be overlooking a battlefield from a cliff. Alright, so in here it's space. You want to send a SEAL team into one, and you want to do a drop force on another. That's still pretty realistic. And meanwhile, you're sending your big tank force in against the city that is going to need that cover. Like I said, this is a very realistic military tactic for a Voltron Kids cartoon. Of course, things go a little bit sideways for a second with the mines on the planet. But I have to say, that was pretty good, too. Voltron is vulnerable because of its size. Splitting up and then reforming was a pretty good tactic. But then there's something else I want to discuss. Lotor and his generals. They turned on him pretty quickly. Not that I blame them, because he did let one of them go. And I also have to admit, I was wrong. I said they were forming a Voltron. No, they were just forming ships to go through a breach. Although, when Lotor said that the experiments his mother performed, is that the first time we actually got confirmed? His escape was pretty badass, too. Except I kind of winced when he, like, dislocated his own shoulder. That's... that's beyond double-jointed. It looks at that moment like the Voltron Force is finally in for a win, and a major one. They've taken back a third of the galaxy. Except for then Hathar says, Excellent. And you're left wondering, going into the next episode, Huh, what? What's excellent about that? Which brings us to a season finale. A new defender? So let's just start right off with the fact that Hathar's plan to blow up a planet is friggin' evil genius. She purposely left a hole in their defenses so that they would say, Hey, look, this is where we can strike and this is what we can do. And what happened? They fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. She designed it so that Voltron itself would be destroyed. Now, of course, you know, it even is the name to the show, so we know Voltron doesn't, but... The new Defender is rather interesting, because it's Lotor. Swooping into the rescue with his new ship that's the most powerful ship in the fleet, I'd guess, short of Voltron itself. He himself is there to stop Mommy's plan. But the real hero of today was Allura, and, well, with an assist from Lance believing in her. 
And I just want to say, I've been using this sufficiently advanced technology and distinguishable from magic th for the entire series, because I believe that's one of the main going themes of Voltron. Even in the original series, the what makes a robeast a robeast and what makes half our magic and something else tech has always been kind of in the gray area. And in this even more so, quintessence is a magical concept, but they're using it also as their technological power source in MacGuffin. Realistically, Allura running the ship is just as much magic as what Hathar does. Now the question is to whether or not Lotor is going to do a full face heel turn, whether or not Hagar is going to realize what just happened, what Hagar's next plan is, whether the king's still going to be such a huge hit for has to kill his son. I don't know. That's all going to come next season. But next season can't come fast enough, because Voltron Legendary Defender is awesome! At least that's my opinion. Let me know what you think down below. And I'm going to just quickly run off some guesswork as to what's going to happen next, though. So let me know what you think about that, too. I think that Alora is going to fall for Lotor, and I think we're going to have an even bigger explanation as to this whole fantasy racism. The whole idea of, can there be a good Lotor? And I bet that part of that's going to also come in in what happens with what's left of those generals that I was calling the Anti-Paladins. Realistically, there's a lot of character development that needs to happen here, and a lot of big explanations. And remember, the Voltron Force is only taking back a third of the Empire. So they have a lot of work to do, too. Pidge and her brother are going to continue to play a big role, I'm sure. And at the same time, we have the question of, what's going to happen when someone new needs to become a paladin? And you know what I just realized? We haven't even had a... We haven't had any Robies this season. We haven't had Robies in a while. But it's gotten time to where I have to ask, if you liked this video, hit that thumbs up button, it really helps the channel out. So far, I've had pretty good luck with sci-fi series and Voltron in general, so let me know if you want me to continue. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. I'm trying to build a community here, one where we can talk about the hows and whys of all storytelling. And Voltron's a very interesting dynamic, because it's teaching us through children's eyes. But for now, I hope you have a good night, and thanks for watching The Heart of the Stories We Tell.